Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. What's up, everybody? This is Josh over here at American AF Dumpsters. Today is, uh, what's today, Wednesday? Wednesday, July 14th. We are halfway through the year. Or we are just past halfway through the year, guys. And, uh, man, let me tell you, it's been one heck of a ride. Yeah, here we are halfway through the year, and, you know, another beautiful morning. And we're headed out to uh, get to work today. So, <clears throat> the purpose of this video is going to be, I got a comment overnight. I believe his name was George Brown. George Brown, what's up, man? I, You know, um, I love getting comments from you guys. If you have anything to say, questions, comments, concerns, whatever it is, go ahead and post it in the comments below. Um, I do read them all, and I try to get it back to them all. All of them, so just make them take me a little while. Wow. But George had a good comment last night, and he was uh, watching apparently my video on not putting the cart before the horse, and and that video is a good one. And that video hasn't gotten a lot of traction as I think it should have, and I think half of it to do half of it has to do with probably the thumbnail. But you know, not putting the cart before the horse um, is probably one of my best, in my opinion, pieces of, of advice for anybody getting into any kind of business. Um, you know, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, guys, at the end of the day, right? I mean, you want to start a business, there's a thousand different ways you can do it. I'm not saying my way is the only way or my way is the only right way at all, because it may not be. Um, my way was the way that I did it. The way I started this business was the way I wanted to start this business. So uh, let me give you a little bit of history on me because, I mean, you guys see me um, out here chit-chatting and talking. You don't know anything about my history. Um, and as far as you guys know, this is my first business, and I just started a few months ago. Kind of like the comment. And I don't think the comment was meant in a rude way at all. Um, if anything, it may have been a compliment. I'm not sure. But um, it could be taken both ways. And, and I, just wanna, I just wanted to address it. So the comment's going to be right here. And the video that he commented on is right there as well. And let me tell you, um, just a little bit of history of who American AF is. I mean, first of all, American AF is all of us. If you're American, if you have pride in your country, um, you know, that that's all of us. I'm Josh Roman, um, and I am an entrepreneur. I am a business owner. I've owned businesses since I was 15 years old. Um, I've worked legally. I was 15, but I worked, worked in my mom and dad's business since I was probably five or six. Um, my mom and dad growing up had a carpet cleaning janitorial business. We would go at nights and we would clean bowling alleys and uh, clean old country buffets up in Wisconsin uh, when they were closed. And, and that's what we did, right? And, and um, so fast forward a little bit when I turned 15 I was working at a grocery store uh, but I was also I think when I was 14 I was pulling up weeds at our subdivision uh, and I had a team of other kids with me or I had a team of three of us so two other guys and myself and I was making a little bit of change there pulling weeds and, and all the flower beds in the subdivision so I mean it's kind of things like that that you know you kind of you, you know as you're growing up that you are going to be a business owner one way or the other, right? So, again, my dad owning a business for so many years just kind of was the way things were. And uh, anyways, I joined a police department when I was 18 after all these odd jobs and side gigs and, and little businesses. I did join a Milwaukee Police Department. I was there for three, almost four years. Um, I did the same tests every police officer does. Um, I was a police aide, though, and I was impatient. I was already... I'd already started a security company on the side and I was already making more in one weekend than I made in two, one to two months in, uh, you know, on the police department as an hourly job. So I decided to quit the police department, even though that was a great job, great benefits, um, which I'm, nowadays I'm glad I did. I, those guys don't get half as much respect as they should, but I did quit the police department and I decided to go full time into my security company same time I was getting married um, I was 21 22 years old and, um, yeah security company was great I mean we really took off and I'll tell you when we really took off was when 
uh, the city of Milwaukee decided to stop responding to burglar alarms. So if you had a burglar alarm in your house, in your place of business, in the entire city of Milwaukee, we responded to all ADT calls. We responded to all Honeywell calls. We responded to a lot of the smaller companies like MAC alarms and stuff like that. Uh, we had to contract with some of the major, you know, all the major alarm companies. And we, our company would respond to um, probably I'd say 80 to 85% of the alarm calls in the city of Milwaukee. Uh, we had squad cars rolling 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as you can imagine. Uh, we had, we would take, I mean, we were our own little mini police department, to be honest with you. We would take, um, you know, mental health patients to and from appointments. Um, you know, if police would pull them over instead of having to, to take police time uh, and police tax dollars to uh, transport these individuals to mental health facilities, our company would do it. We did a lot of uh, festivals. Milwaukee's huge for church festivals. Uh, we did a lot of festivals. We had a lot of contracts. We had a lot of apartment complexes. So we were a pretty big company. Um, and I tell you, that was a very fun business to be in. Um, we did have several major incidents, uh, but at the end of the day, it was a very fun business to be in. I decided to move to Texas and uh, sold the business, moved down here, uh, and, and you know, the rest is kind of history. So as far as business is concerned, we moved down to Texas. Um, and I immediately, we immediately got into buying and flipping houses. Well, that's when the housing market crashed. So, we, you know, we were stuck with all these houses. We weren't able to sell them. We weren't able to, we had a lot of um, de debt on the houses because of uh, the repairs that we did to the houses. So we ended up renting them out. And um, and then we decided to start a limo company. So over the years, I mean, I've, I've, we've had several different companies and businesses. Um, some have worked and some haven't. My wife and I started a gift gift shop back in Wisconsin uh, when we were first got married that absolutely went zero and tanked immediately um, we did have a real estate company so I went to school in Wisconsin I did my got my real estate license then I did continuing education on real estate and I got my broker's license and I opened up my own real estate firm um, similar to you know Century 21 or uh, Remax obviously more near as big but that lasted for about two years until we decided to move to Texas again and uh, we just closed up shop and because the licensing in Wisconsin and Texas is not reciprocal so I could not take my license from Wisconsin and use it here in Texas I would have had to go through all the real estate courses again and that I did not feel like starting from the beginning so um, I am no longer a realtor uh, or a broker so what else have I done I mean uh, we owned, we, we started, we opened from scratch a soccer facility, soccer, um, indoor soccer um, facility here in Waxahachie, Texas. Um, so my dad and I and a couple builders that we know uh, literally took an empty warehouse and we turned it into a um, soccer complex. So two indoor soccer fields. But at first, you know, we started small, same as with this business. Uh, I, I test the market first and, and literally everything was paid for out of pocket. I did not borrow one dime to start the indoor soccer facility, um, but I started small. So everything was paid for out of pocket. Uh, I got some used football turf. We laid that down. There was no AC at first. Uh, we painted the floors. Uh, we just went as inexpensive as we possibly could, but still had it made it, made it look nice. So I spent about 20 to 30 grand out of pocket uh, and then as we started making money, as we saw that it was a viable business, um, we started investing more money into it. So we did buy the turf. Turf costs, uh, I believe, like 25000 between the two soccer fields. And that's those are small fields. The turf is unbelievably expensive. But we bought the turf, had that installed. Um, then after that, we got an air conditioning company to come out. And, you know, it was a $20,000 AC unit. But we, we were able to pay all that stuff with money that the business itself generated, right? So that's where I, you know, my point of not putting the car before the horse comes in. Because what if that business would not have been viable in that area? What if, you know, we put that indoor soccer facility in in there and um, it just was not, uh, the, the community could not support it, right? Um, you know, we would have spent all that money. I would have had debt if I would have taken out loans and not been able to pay it off. So 
we tested the market first and then we decided to go ahead and invest more money into it. So, uh, and again, it helps your business out by not, not, you know, creating this mound of debt. Um, so that's what we did with this business. So then uh, COVID hit, obviously we started a limo company back in 2007 when the market crashed, we started a limo company um, and we've been with that one ever since. That one's been very successful. Uh, thank God everything's worked out very well there. Um, and then COVID hit, right? So um, the the limo company took a huge major hit, as you can, I'm sure you can imagine. Nobody's booking limos to go anywhere during COVID. And we felt like we had to do something just because A, I was super bored and I couldn't sit at home and do nothing. And B, uh, we weren't sure if the limo company was gonna be coming back or not. So um, that's where this company came comes into play. So that I've done a lot of talking. Um, if you want some more history, I can do some more videos on some history. If you want to know more about my history or my businesses or anything like that, uh, please, you know, put it in the comments below if you need any advice on starting a business. So when somebody tells me, um, you know, you're talking like an OG, that's because I am. At the end of the day, I feel like I am. You know, I, I've had a ton of experiences. I've opened up. I've made mistakes, but I've also had lots of successes in my life. Um, lots of low points, lots of high points, but that's what being a business owner is. It's just a roller coaster at the end of the day. I mean, you're never going to have, you know, a perfect week. We're always learning. If you're breathing, you're learning. Um, and if you think you know it all, that's going to be your downfall. Um, so I, I have a lot of business experience. Once you know how to become successful and you you've got the magic formula i mean it's really there is no magic formula let's be honest but there's building blocks and and each business you know no matter what industry it's in each business has the same skeleton the same you know form and as long as you take those building blocks that you've learned over the years and you apply them to your new business you will be successful in whatever you do it's just um You've got to have the heart, you've got to commit, and you've got to make sure that you put the customer first and make sure that um, you work hard at anything in life and you'll be successful no matter what. So there's my story, guys. There's my spiel. Now you know a little bit more about me. Anyway, guys, that's that's me. That's Josh Roman. I hope, you know, it's take, it takes a lot to open up. I hope you've learned something. I hope you can take something away from this uh, video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.